Hi guys, Skill up here. You might remember me from such videos as For the Love of God, Don't Buy This Game and the smash hit follow-up, See? I Told You Not To Buy This Game. So Bethesda Game Studios released an update to Fallout 76 and I thought I'd do a video on it. Stop! You violated the law. Okay, so listen, let's be clear on the objectives for this video. I did not come here with the intention of making a video to shit all over Fallout 76. As the intro can attest to, that would be fun and an easy video to make because this game is still an absolute catastrophe in more than a few ways. But I genuinely did not set out to make that video because we've all seen it a thousand times. Entire YouTube careers have been built trashing this game. And I really hope that I could offer a more positive assessment of Fallout when I decided to review Wastelanders. But I can't let those good intentions supersede my main objective, which is to show you what Fallout 76 is like today so you can make an informed decision about whether or not to purchase it or whether to jump back into it if Bethesda managed to scam you out of your money the first time around. To do this, I started an entirely new character on the day that Wastelanders was released. I leveled that character up to level 20 and then I did both sides of the Wastelanders campaign content since there are two paths before you have to make a critical decision. I did a fair chunk of the original campaign again, I did a fair chunk of the side content, some of it again and some for the first time. I did a bunch of crafting, I built a camp which I'm particularly proud of. I unlocked one of the new NPC companions, I played this fucking game for about 30 hours this past week and I put myself through that because I wanted to provide as comprehensive a view as I could about what this game is like in 2020. Now I don't want to be coy about this. I hate this game. Most of the things wrong with the launch state of Fallout 76 are exactly the same as they were back then, and these things are such deal breakers that no amount of new content can fix what's wrong here. I still firmly believe that this is garbage, so if you were to ask me right now, should I buy Fallout 76, my answer would be a resounding hell fucking no. But I would follow up with unless, because there are some improvements here. Definitely, and some of these improvements are so notable that they make it possible to recommend this game to a very specific subset of people. In my darkest, most shameful moments, I enjoyed some of my time with Fallout 76. The core underlying Bethesda model of first person and third person exploration in a vast open world will always be appealing, but populating that world with NPCs notably elevates that experience. The introduction of characters who are well written and well voiced is great. As many have noticed, this is better writing than anything we saw in Fallout 4. The RPG skill checks in dialogue options are good. There are plenty of instances here where your stats and decisions will manifestly affect story outcomes in the campaign, and that's a good thing too. But at the end of the day, Wastelanders is essentially an enjoyable single-player DLC adventure that has been crudely bolted on to what is still an absolutely horrendous video game. Many will wonder if it's worth suffering through Fallout 76 in order to experience this new content, and the simple answer to that is absolutely not. Ironically, Wastelanders is the perfect argument for why Fallout 76 should never have existed in the first place, or at least not in the way that it does. The core DNA of this update, the things that people like most about it, are the very things that Fallout 76 was never designed to deliver and can never fully deliver. That's why you have some NPCs that you can shoot and others that you can't. That's why you can't progress through cutscenes with your friends. That's why you can rob blind any NPC you meet and they won't do anything to stop you. If you were to put Wastelanders into Fallout 4 or even Fallout 3, it immediately becomes a better experience because those games have the immersive, rules-based consequences that Fallout 76 could never have. On top of all of this, coming back to this game after all this time lets me see for myself just how grotesque Bethesda's vision for game monetization has become. If you're one of the people that can accept Fallout 76 on its own ridiculous, unpalatable, ludicrous terms, then you might have fun with it. If you can accept Wastelanders as a singular, finite addition to that package, then you might have fun with that too. But if you were hoping that Wastelanders was a sort of No Man's Sky 2.0 or Destiny 2 or Final Fantasy XIV Redemption arc, then no, Fallout 76 is still Fallout 76. And in this review, I'm going to show you what that looks like in 2020. Country Road. 
Fallout 76 is famous for being one of the worst running, worst optimized, most unstable AAA games in history. I can confirm that most of this is still the case, but there are some improvements here. Server stability is the big one. Even in what I expect was a busy launch window for the game and its servers, I didn't get disconnected once. This is in stark contrast to my original experience with the game where I'd be disconnected all the damn time. Netcode, however, is not good. The most common thing you'll encounter is shooting enemies only for those shots to simply not register at all. Now, to be fair, I can't tell if this is netcode related or one of the other myriad bugs present in the game, but I'm gonna put it down to netcode because that's usually what this is in other online games. Either way, the fact that I no longer get booted offline all the time is a big plus, but it's also kind of a minimum expectation, so let's not get carried away. Frame rates. So yeah, I played this on an RTX 2080 Ti running at 1080p. I run it at 1080p because if I try for 1440p, the frame rate struggles to maintain 60 FPS. At ultra settings on 1080p, I got a fairly constant 72 frames a second, but I still got plenty of frame drops. I would regularly drop down into the 40s or even 30s when I was in dense environments with a lot of geometry on display. Having said that, I did find this to be more stable than when I played it back in 2018. It's not good by any means, but it is better. I'd have described Fallout 76 as essentially unplayable at launch. It's certainly playable now, but the fact that I'm still forced to run it at 1080p while using a 2080 Ti is pretty wild. On a side note, in my 30-ish hours of play, I had four hard crashes, two of which forced me to restart my computer. So that's less than five, I guess? PC controls was where I was the most surprised because I honestly thought that they must have fixed this by now, but no, you still have to use all these weird keys on the keyboard to do a whole bunch of stuff that you should be able to do with a mouse. Building and crafting is just the worst. It's, it's just, it's the same. It's the same. It's horrendous. Graphically, the game is the same, but there has been some changes made to lighting. Most of the time, this is an improvement. I definitely soaked up some wholesome Todd rays on occasion and remarked how good some of the ambient internal lighting looks. The flip side is that saturation can get pretty nuts. Certain outdoor scenes look almost black and white because there's just so much light being thrown at you that it kind of overpowers everything. This is daytime, by the way, not a brightly moonlit night as you might be thinking. Overall, when it comes to performance, you can say that this is a more stable game that won't disconnect you as often and will maintain a slightly better frame rate. On the PC options and controls, it's basically identical to how you left it, and the game does look better sometimes when the new lighting system isn't blowing its wad. That brings us to bugs. Now, one of the talking points I've seen doing the rounds is that Bethesda has done a really good job ironing out all the bugs and that it's much better than it was. Good job. Bethesda. No, no, this is a fucking lie. I will freely admit that there are some parts of this game that are improved, but Bugs is not one of them. I mean, just one example, a mission here that I commenced, and when I got inside, I got this awesome graphical glitch, and then I watched an NPC jank out while trying to enter this tube. That broke the quest, so the intercom didn't work and I had to reload the game. And then the checkpoint didn't save, so I had to do the entire mission from the start. At one point, I was trying to clear a room, but the geometry was broken and I was shooting an invisible wall. And then when I edged in closer, I learned that the turret on my left was able to shoot me through a wall. Later on, the game spawned in a level 50 enemy, even though I was only around level 33. And this was a specific instance unique to me alone. This is just one example. The little montage I showed at the start was just a smattering of what I experienced throughout my playthrough. Every part of this game is compromised by regular bugs. Combat, exploration, questing, dialogue, crafting, base building, everything. Anytime I hear someone say, Fallout 76 is buggy as hell, but I like it despite that. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Anytime I hear someone say, actually, it's the YouTubers who exaggerate the bugs to get the click. No, absolute smooth brain. West Virginia, Mountain Mama. Wastelanders is set one year after the cloistered dwellers of Vault 76 first stepped foot into Appalachia. It's a nice idea that builds a sense of progression and continuity into the world and the storyline, and it makes it easier to explain why there are suddenly hundreds of people on the map where before there were none. Your first steps out of the vault are identical, but it's what happens after that that's new. You'll descend the stairs to meet two NPCs, the first time something like this has ever been possible in Fallout 76 since before there were no people, only robots and holotape recordings and boredom. 
The two new NPCs you meet set the tone well. They're intrepid adventurers hunting the big one and you can either be honest with them or mess with them. The choices you make affect their demeanor toward you, giving a taste of the meaningful decision making that awaits you in the broader campaign. Where before Fallout 76 would send you on a mind crushingly dull Easter egg hunt to track down the overseer's voice recordings, now that questline has been moved into the side quest category. The game now pushes you towards the Wayward, a new bar that suddenly appeared on the map and it's full of actual people or NPCs I guess I should say. You go there and lo and behold a stick up is going down and you get to decide how to resolve that situation. I did this twice with two different characters and yes it definitely plays out differently depending on your choices and you get a nice warm feeling as you remember a time when Bethesda could do no wrong and horse armor and paid mods and Fallout 4's dialogue systems were all just a twinkle in Todd's eye. I will tell you that I had an enjoyable experience playing through the opening quest line and the first 10 levels that it awarded me. It's a quest with different paths to choose based on your personal choices and the character build you have. It's characters who are funny and charming and well acted that you look forward to meeting again when you return from your errands. Ammo and weapons are plentiful and the path to acquiring new equipment is quick. Enemies you encounter are of a similar level to you and they die in a reasonable length of time. For the briefest of moments, Fallout 76 stops being 76 and it starts being a Fallout game. And I cry. I cry every time because I know what comes next. Take your own. Country road. At level 10, you'll catch up with the Overseer who'll be like, listen, thanks for the help, glad you're having fun. What I need you to do now is do some really boring bullshit for 10 levels and then come back to me for some more good stuff, okay? Okay, off you go. At this point, you're thrust back into the original vanilla Fallout 76 leveling experience in all its staggering, stupefying tedium. It's exactly the same content as before, where you're exploring empty buildings, speaking to annoying robots, reading computer terminals, and listening to holotapes. Nothing has been done to change any of this with this update. Only it's now worse because now you have something to compare it to. Every new mind-numbing quest you go through, every new dumbass robot you meet, reminds you of how good you had it just a short while ago and how long it will be until you get that back. This is essentially around 10 hours of picking up beer bottles or clicking on terminals and then clicking on all the options as quickly as possible because God help you if you try reading any of it. It's endless back and forward fetch quests where you sent to one location to collect one thing and then sent somewhere halfway across the map to collect a different thing and there's never a payoff. There's never a moment of satisfaction. It's just drudgery for hours and hours. One notable difference on offer here is that the world is now populated with NPCs which does make things Things more bearable. You'll sometimes happen upon a group of settlers who are being harassed by wolves or mole men or whatever and you can help them out. You might meet a lone raider somewhere and you decide that you like what he's wearing. I haven't hit rock bottom yet. Just you wait. Maybe someone gives you a little bit too much lip for your liking. Great. Thanks for nothing. These interactions are generally meaningless, but it's a fun punctuation in an otherwise bland and sleep-inducing leveling block. If I was to be generous, I might say that the one joy to be had here is to be loosed upon the broader Appalachia. Now, I'm human, I feel things, I feel it when I look down over a forested vista, each of its locations brimming with the possibility of desk fans or lead pencils or, dare I hope, dumbbells and free weights. That feeling of quiet isolation is core to the Bethesda formula. It's almost the bedrock of what they sell and it is served up here. I know that many who enjoy Fallout 76 enjoy it for this reason. There are moments when even I felt drawn in by this world and genuinely interested to explore it, but sadly you'll soon learn that Appalachia is little more than a siren. Hypnotic and alluring from afar, but a fucking bitch up close. All my memories gather round her. Fallout 76 is the first game I've played where I simply cannot figure out why half of it exists in the way that it does. Why would you make so many weapons that take this long to reload and yet do almost no damage? Why would you create so many bottlenecks in your crafting economy so that everyone is running around googling guides for screws and lead? Why would you put level numbers on enemies if those numbers mean absolutely nothing whatsoever and it's complete potluck if that enemy will die quickly or soak up half your ammo reserves? Why would you put enemies two or three times my current level 
level into my individual instance missions? Why would you make a combat model where every enemy runs up to your face as quickly as possible while also allowing those enemies to stagger you? Why would you drop loot for me that I can't use for another 20 or 30 hours at least? Why would you charge me so much for fast travel when I earn almost no money as it is? Just one example of the sheer stupidity underpinning this game's design. Enemies spawn based on the highest level player who has recently passed by an area. So you can be level 20, randomly dropped onto a map with a level 300 player, and if they go anywhere near one of your objectives, you can expect to meet enemies at least two or three times your level. This happens all the fucking time. Economic balancing, ammo economy, and enemy health are so broken that I ended up using melee weapons most of the time towards the end of missions. Every mission I had burned through hundreds of rounds from multiple weapons, so so I would just take out a melee weapon and just start bashing things and the truly ridiculous thing about that is that I would be doing nearly the same amount of damage as I would with my rifle even though I had zero points in melee skills. None. Absolute madness. Now I could go on forever and ever with questions like this but to be honest I just kind of be repeating a lot of the stuff that I said in my original review of the game so you can go back and watch that if you haven't. The key point is that Fallout 76, the cool game that underpins Wastelanders, is still a spectacularly poorly designed video game and if you're going into this game then you have to be willing to accept that. And it's in this acceptance that Fallout 76 finds its redemption in the minds of many. Now I hate this game but I know a lot of other people love it and I think one of the reasons they love it is because everything is so hard and grindy. In Appalachia, everything is hard fought, hard won and hard spent. There are just no free rides, at least not at the beginning, and I know that a lot of people derive satisfaction from overcoming all of the challenges that this game throws at you. You can stare down your lack of supplies, travel light, head to an abandoned robotics factory, fill up your bags with precious components and return home having collected enough for one or two more hours maybe even a weapon mod you've been chasing. Then you can tackle a daily quest for some caps, then you can capture a workshop and mine some ore while raiding a nearby power plant. You had so little when you started, but now you've got just enough to get through to tomorrow, or maybe the day after that, and in that moment, you've lived the fallout survival experience that 76 promised. And for many people, that's exactly what they were hoping for. Yes, you taste the moonshine. Let's say hypothetically, you're crazy enough to grind all the way up to level 20 and begin your Wastelanders campaign. What can you expect at that point? Well, for starters, you'll be introduced to the two new factions, the Settlers and the Raiders. You moonlight between these two groups, earning their trust as you track down a great prize hidden somewhere in Appalachia. I will tell you that I really enjoyed the talking parts of Wastelanders. You step foot into the new settlements and they look pretty great. Built up higher and bigger than anything you've seen to that point, and the fact that they aren't ruined junk piles sort of jumps out at you given their contrast to pretty much every other building on the map. The NPCs there are also great. One area that I will offer unqualified praise for Wastelanders is the writing and the voice acting. I like so many of these characters. They felt genuine, interesting, funny. With a skint economy of words, they got across so much personality and purpose. Backing up all of that was some very meaningful choice across almost every part of the 10 hour campaign. Many of the NPCs I encountered gave me the choice for how to handle things, be it stealthily or all guns blazing or sweet talking or whatever. I got to choose who would live and who would die. I ultimately got to choose who to side with in a way that made the choice feel very real and significant rather than phoned in or token. The RPG stat checks built into this were also very satisfying. Put enough points into intellect and you can go full Stephen Hawking on them. Points in perception will let you notice when someone is holding back. Points in charisma will let you smooth talk your way through things, while strength allows you to pursue a more intimidating approach. It's nothing we've never seen before, but these systems are rather timeless because they let us sink deeper into the roleplay, which is the whole point of all this anyway. The Wastelanders campaign is essentially divided in two, with each faction having their own set of quests in the lead up to the final decision on who to side with. You can do both quest chains, which is what I did, and even if you side with one, you can still do the end game quests and rep grind with the other, so no options are closed off in that regard. This update has been met with much enthusiasm from quite a few people. At the time of recording, Fallout 76 sits at 75% positive rating on Steam. And I get it, right? I think Wastelanders is an easy update to enjoy because it gives Fallout fans what they've always wanted, an actual Fallout experience in Fallout 76. 
Fallout is not trash on the ground or shitty combat or atomic stores. Fallout is beautiful, desolate role-playing escapism. It's the individual against the shattered world with nothing but their wits or their brawn or their charm or their guile to get them through. It's a decision to play it straight or backstab someone. It's a decision to side with the brotherhood or go to war with them. It's a decision to blow up Megaton or leave it standing. It's knowing when to break the rules and how to manage the consequences if you get caught doing so. In short, Fallout is many, many things yes. that Fallout 76 was never designed to provide. There was a moment for me in Wastelanders where I came upon a hotel. It had two NPCs in there. They were nice people. The man was forgetful and directed me to his wife. The wife informed me that it would be five caps to stay in a room. I paid it and went upstairs, but I noticed that the door was open before that anyway. In other Bethesda games, I'd piss someone off or get arrested for sleeping in a bed that I didn't own. In Fallout 76, there are no consequences for stuff like that, so I essentially gave her five caps for nothing. When I returned to her, I noticed that there was a computer terminal in front of her. I hacked it while standing directly in front of her. It let me unlock a safe. I found the safe at her feet. I looted the safe while she stood directly above it. She just looked at me while I did this and then I left. It was in this moment that I realized why it was that Bethesda removed NPCs from Fallout 76 in the first place. It was because having them present meant that they'd have to implement all of the same rules that typically exist in a Bethesda world. The law, reputations, bounties, consequences for your actions, all of those things are central to the Bethesda RPG experience. They're a huge part of selling the immersion that these games promise. When I looted that safe and walked off, it all made sense to me then. Bethesda removed NPCs because this always online, shared world, looter shooter survival game couldn't handle those rules. Fallout 76 wasn't a Bethesda game, and it never really can be. I tried to play Wastelanders with my brother at the start, and what we discovered was that during cutscenes, party members were offered an option. They could join the party leader's cutscene, but they could only watch what was going down. They don't get to make dialogue choices. When the scene is over, party members need to redo the scene again, but for themselves this time. There was no option to hand over control to the leader and let them progress your story together. You had to do it separately. I don't want to take away from the enjoyable, story-driven RPG moments that Wastelanders provides because it absolutely does provide those. The problem is that it provides a lesser, more watered-down version of those experiences than what we've experienced in the past. I would absolutely play Morrowind right through before I played another second of Fallout 76 and Morrowind came out 18 years ago. The logical response to this is, well, go and play that then, or Oblivion, or Fallout 3, or Skyrim, or Fallout New Vegas, or maybe if you're really desperate, go play Fallout 4. Fallout 76 isn't trying to be that. And that was true up until Wastelanders, because now it is trying to be that, except it's trying to be that in an online world where everyone can steal your workshops, interrupt your cutscenes, mess with your enemy levels, loot items before you can, and all sorts of other stuff that comes with being an online game. And yeah, that includes the cash shop as well. In the morning now she calls me I cringe to read so much of the positive press that this game is getting, I really do. It basically says something along the lines of, hey, Bethesda fucked up at the start, but now they're doing their best to make it right. Wastelanders has some cool NPCs. Give Fallout 76 a second chance and buy it today. I'd be inclined to buy into this narrative if the core technical and design-based issues with this game were addressed over the last 18 months, but as I've demonstrated in this review, they absolutely have not been. I'd also be inclined to buy into this narrative if I hadn't experienced firsthand just how bad the monetization in this game has become. What Bethesda has done with their cash shop has been well documented at this point. They promised that they would never provide pay to win items, which they've technically stuck to depending on your definition of pay to win and PVP, but they've definitely sold utility based items that make Fallout 76 a less inconvenient experience than it would otherwise be. Core game mechanics such as item repairs, scrap gathering, food refrigeration, etc. all become easier if you are willing to part with some of your hard earned or purchased atoms. Now when it comes to the cash shop, I will say that these utility items are generally obtainable for free if you're someone who decides to sink serious hours into Fallout 76. Between what you earn when you're leveling and what you can get from daily and weekly challenges, you'll eventually get enough to tick those utility items off the list. It still sucks that they exist in a cash shop at all, but there you have it. My greatest joy in Fallout 76 is my camp. Now I won't lie, I love my camp. Stepping away from the game, hopefully forever, I will miss my 
my camp. I had multiple buildings. It had a museum and ironically enough, the display cabinets were bugged when I was recording this, so they're all empty. Ha ha ha, hilarious. Anyway, when the new NPC joined my camp, he was excited to have his own bar, but it was just a shitty little stand. So I built this man his own proper bar that he could be proud of. This little town was my own clockwork universe and I loved it. Again, many of the items that I would like to build within my camp are in the cash shop as well. I know they're just cosmetic, but if your camp is a core part of the gameplay loop, then we all agree that Bethesda is monetizing a core part of the gameplay loop. Thank you, case closed. I know I could grind incredibly dull daily and weekly challenges to earn these items, but that's not gonna happen. Goodbye, sweet prince. Now I'm not an unreasonable person. I understand the need for live service games to monetize fairly so that they can sustain their development. And I know it's a hard line to walk between selling things that are desirable and providing enough value to players who don't spend a cent. I get that and I'm sympathetic to that. But I have zero sympathy for Bethesda because Fallout 76 has never, ever been close enough to the level of completeness or quality to justify putting out their hands to ask for more of your cash. But that is, of course, exactly what they did when they launched this game in an absolutely shameless, unfinished, pre-alpha state that was essentially a bad asset flipped Fallout 4 multiplayer mod. And if I sound cold and dispassionate, just wait. I haven't even got to the best part yet. Bethesda saved their biggest dick move for October 2019 when they revealed Fallout First, an actual subscription service that costs $22.95 Australian dollars a month. That's $275 a year that Bethesda wants me to give them. I can buy three full price games for that price living here in Australia. So what does Fallout First give you? Well, in short, it sells you all of the solutions to the problems that Bethesda have created in their awful design. First of all, it gives you 1650 atoms per month so you can buy stuff from the store, whatever. It gives you a survival tent, which is essentially a mini camp that you can put anywhere on the map and is hugely convenient because you can put it near dense areas and fast travel there for free and it makes gathering materials quicker and easier. It gives you a scrap box that allows you unlimited storage for crafting components. I filled up my scrap box in my first 20 hours of play and spent the rest of my time carefully managing it because it was such a stingy limit. It's nice to know that this problem exists so that Bethesda can upsell me a solution. Best of all, the subscription gives you access to private servers. If you're someone who doesn't want other players hassling you, ruining your immersion or looting your spawns, Bethesda could have given you what so many other games do, an offline option. Instead, they can make all of your problems disappear if you just give them some cold, hard cash every single month, forever. That's why I cringe when I read all this positive press for this game. I agree, Wastelanders is cool and it's a free update, but is it really free when it sits inside a game that charges you in this way and that purposefully holds back your experience and inconveniences you if you don't pay? I'd argue, no. The final thing I would say in all of this is all these people that go to the mat defending Bethesda for this, like, you are literally just inviting Bethesda to do this for Starfield and The Elder Scrolls 6. You are saying, please, make my gaming experience more shit so you can sell me the solutions. Hold things back from me so that you can charge me a subscription to access them. It is honestly as simple as that. Life is all there. I want to say something important as I start wrapping up this video. I tried to find the credits for the Wastelanders update and I couldn't find them anywhere. The credits in the game menu appear to be from the original release of Fallout 76 and I couldn't find the Wastelanders credits anywhere online. I want to say to the people that worked on this update, good job. Whoever directed it, good job. To the team of people who wrote it, good job. To the quest designers, good job. To Enon Zer, who did the soundtrack, amazing job. This soundtrack is just the best. I, I love it so much. I think Wastelanders is good. Meeting NPCs in the world is cool and makes everything feel more dynamic. The early game quests are great. The Wastelanders campaign, dialogue choices, characters, townships, etc. They're all great. But Wastelanders is a short-lived summer tryst in the long winter that is Fallout 76, and even in its best moments, it's never close to what other Bethesda or Obsidian or Bioware or CD Projekt Red games have delivered to us. The trade-offs inherent in the always online looter-shooter survival game equation are not worth it because the base game of Fallout 76 is still an absolute train wreck and it has not changed anywhere near enough to make it bearable. But I tell you what has changed, us. As I played through Fallout 76 again this week, I was struck by how unaffected I was by its worst aspects. 
Where before I had this kind of violent reaction to it because the shock of its badness was just so all consuming. It's like you couldn't think about anything else. The second time around, I knew what I was in for. So that shock wasn't there. And a wave of acceptance kind of washed over me. Sort of like, well, I'm still here, aren't I? I've got no one to blame but myself for putting myself through this. And that's true. It's almost like if you choose to pay Bethesda money for this and you invest your time into it, then you can't blame Bethesda because you have been warned by every corner of the internet for the last 18 months. If you choose to play Fallout 76, then that's on you. Shorn of the shock factor, there was now space for some new reactions to fill. As I've discussed, some of that space was filled with positive sentiment. The remaining space was filled with a realization of just how old Fallout 76 feels at this point. Playing Fallout 76 feels like stepping back in time well beyond 2018. It felt like booting up a retro game. The way it looks, the way it handles, the enemy design and behavior, the character models, no part of it feels remotely contemporary. It just feels like this shambling relic. I appreciate the work that the dev team have put in here. I really do. But all of that good work is fatally undermined by a base game that is irredeemably bad and a management team that is intent on milking every dollar they can from their player base. Wastelanders is good, but I don't think Fallout 76 ever can be. Hey.